Hello, final chapter, final video of chapter eight. This is going to be um, alcohols again, but this time we're actually gonna be focusing on a derivative of alcohol. Um, derivative just means um, a molecule that can be synthesized using an alcohol. So in the last video, you learned that alcohols can be oxidated into um, these ketones, aldehydes, and carboxylic acids, right? And now this chapter, we're actually going to be talking about um, this ketone and aldehydes and um, carboxylic acids, but we're mainly going to be talking about ketones and aldehydes. Carboxylic acids will be later on in 40C. So this is going to be about carbonyls, and this ketone can be made uh, by oxidating the secondary alcohol using Jones, right? Or PCC, whichever one you wanna use, but you do need to use a reduce, uh, an oxidizing agent, right? So um, as this reduces, it turns into a ketone and then we have this carbonyl compound that we can do some chemistry with, right? And let's go through with, um, first of all, their appearance and their structure, okay? So here we have the bond line uh, the skeletal formula, right? But here I just drew the Lewis structure just so it looks, uh, so that you can uh, evenly see the every element that's in here, right? So I wanna focus your attention on this specific bond right here, right? This is a reoccurring theme that you'll find in 40A, 40B, 40C, is that there has to be something that's positive or negative for reactions to happen, right? You know, nucleophiles attack positive sites. And there is actually a dipole here with oxygen being a delta negative and carbon being a delta positive. This chapter, carbonyl chapter, will be more um, taught more in depth in 40B, but this is important for your understanding of oxidizing and reducing agents, right? So because of this both duality of um, delta negative and delta positive charges, this molecule, this carbonyl compound, can react with both a nucleophile, right, because we have this carbon that's a positive charge, and it can react with a with a, um, an electrophile because we have this oxygen with lone pairs and a delta negative, right? So let's see what it looks like when it's being a nucleophile, okay? We have this carbon here, that's a uh, that's attached to a leaving group, right? This leaving group is usually a halogen. Because it's a halogen, there's a delta negative and a delta plus. And we do have a delta negative here that can attack this and this will leave, right? And if that happens, we just get this bond right here, right? This is a methyl. So we just receive uh, a methyl there. Oh, and I forgot to add the other methyl. Uh, there you go, that's two, right? because we have two bonds here, two carbons here. Okay, and then because of this, if we do a formal charge on this um, uh, compound here, oxygen has a positive charge, right? So this is it acting as a nucleophile. Nothing new, you've seen this before, it's pretty basic, right? And then, like I said, um, let's see it acting as an electrophile, right? Because we do have this carbon that's positive, uh, delta positive, and then this is still no delta negative. If, this, if a nucleophile comes and attacks that carbon, this bond, this double bonded O would have to go back up to the oxygen, right? Because of this, we get this uh, weird looking species with a negative charged oxygen. And you'll learn this later on in 40B. This is called a tetrahedral intermediate, right? And then from this, you can see how we can get a, a, an alcohol here, right? We just need to add a hydrogen here. And actually, that's what's going to be happening with a reduction of um, carbonyls. So because, uh, oops, sorry. Because we, we know how to make this compound now because we reacted it with a nucleophile, that means we can make carbonyls into alcohols, right? Either secondary or primary or tertiary alcohols. So how do we do that? We use reducing agents or reduction, right? So let me introduce you to this species right here. It's an H with 
uh, a lone pairs of electrons. And because it has lone pairs, it has a negative formal charge. And these are called hydrides, right? And as you can see from this, it's a strong nucleophile and a strong base, right? If you remember, uh, nucleophiles are strongest when they go left of the periodic table. This is the first element of the periodic table. This is as left as it can be, right? And because of that, we can take advantage of this chemistry. It's pretty much just attacking a hydrogen onto a, uh, an electrophile, right? And because of this, we can do this weird type of chemistry where we attack this carbonyl and then this bond goes up here and we just added a C to H bond, right? If you remember, that was the opposite of oxidation. In oxidation, we got rid of C to H bonds. In reduction, we're adding C to H bonds, right? You see here, this carbon had zero C to H bonds, but we're reducing it, so we're adding a C to H bond. And then this one had two bonds to oxygen, two CO bonds, but now it only has one, right? And because of this, this is the definition of reduction, okay? So where do we just get these hydrides? Because these hydrides here are extremely explosive. And if you work on them uh, with, with them in the lab, they will blow up. So how do we work with these? Well, they're usually under NABH4 or LIALH4. And I've drawn their structure here. It's a boron with four hydrogens and these hydrogens are hydrides. So this has four hydrides, right? And this one has it too. Um, this boron is negatively charged and it's being shielded by the sodium. Same thing with this aluminum with the lithium. And NABH4 is called sodium borohydride and LIALH4 is called lithium aluminum hydride. Lithium, aluminum, and then the hydrides over here, right? And these are just the reagents and that you have to know for this, um, but they're not that hard to um, remember, right? So what's actually the difference between these two? Can we just use both of them? Um, like, can we use both of them consecutively? Actually, no, because there is some weird chemistry going on here and let's get to that. So for example, here we have a ketone, right? If we subject it under um, LIALH4, one of the hydrides here are going to attack the oxygen like this, right? And because of this, we get this uh, tetrahedral intermediate with a hydrogen that just attacked that carbon, right? And we have this uh, oxygen with a negative charge. And let's say we want to get to this um, species, right? This species over here. How do we get from here to here to a secondary carbon, right? Because remember secondary. So how do we do that? This is something called an acidic workup. What we're going to do is we're going to subject this tetrahedral intermediate with water and a source of an acidic H, right? Because of this acidic hydrogen, the oxygen can come attack that acidic hydrogen, right? And we get this species right here. And I wanna be very clear about this. This happens in two separate steps. They're not gonna happen in the same step, sorry. They're not gonna happen in the same step because if that happens, like I said, hydrides are very explosive when they're under an acidic conditions with water, they will explode. That's why we need to do these two separately, right? In the lab and in um, theoretical uh, terms with this. So first we subject it under our reducing agent, which is LiAlH4. Because of that, it gets rid of this double bond and it adds a bond to H, right? And now we have a negatively charged oxygen. To get rid of that negatively charged oxygen and get back our alcohol, we subject it under an acidic workup where we have water and an acid source. Again, it can be any acid. Usually the most common one is just H2O with a, hyd uh, a hydronium ion right here, this H plus ion, or you can even do H2SO4 or anything like that. And because of that, we get 
this species, okay? And the same thing we can do with um, uh, NABH4, right? This is NABH4, same ketone that we have. Instead, now we have a solvent here. This is ethanol, right? A polar solvent. And this happens in one step. So now that you know this, which one looks like it's the stronger reducing agent? LiAlH4 or NaBH4? When I'm looking at this, it might seem counterintuitive, right? You might think, oh, NaBH4 is stronger because it happens in one step. That's not the case because the reason why this happens in two steps is how strong this lithium aluminum hydride is. Because if we were to do this in one step, this lithium aluminum hydride is so strong that it will react with other elements in the, um, in the solvent, right? And because NaBH4 is not as strong as lithium aluminum hydride, we can just plop them into our solvent and get this exact same molecule. So when you're comparing strength of reducing agents, lithium aluminum hydride is a lot stronger than NaBH4, right? It, that's like a little uh, greater than. So lithium aluminum hydride is stronger than NaBH4. And because of that, let's take this example, um, let's take this ex uh, example reaction, right? We have this molecule here. We have this weird looking uh, molecule with a Br and a um, ketone. We subject it under lithium aluminum hydride and water with our acidic workup, right? So two separate steps. Again, this is our acidic workup, right? Get used to the nomenclature. Acidic workup or acid workup, whichever one works, it's up to you, okay? Because of this, we know that this is a reducing agent. So this is going to be an alcohol, right? Because we have this acidic workup. But because lithium aluminum hydride is so strong, look at what else we have here. We have a, a primary carbon next attached to a haloalkane, which is a good leaving group. And it can actually do an SN2 attack. One of the hydrogens will actually do an SN2 attack. Meaning not only are we getting this reduction of this carbonyl, we're also getting an SN2 reaction here and you will be left with this, right? And since now you know a lot more about organic chemistry than you started, there should be something that's alarming with this reaction. What is it? The mechanism is, as you can see from up here, it attacks the carbonyl right here, right? And this bond goes up the H. Look at what we made here. Is this carbon a chiral carbon? We have one group, two, three, and an implicit hydrogen. That means we created a chiral carbon, which means there is stereochemistry that we have to consider here. And this happens. This can make a racemic mixture. This OH can either go as a wedge or as a dash or as a wedge. Just because the fact that the lithium aluminum hydride reduced it to a secondary alcohol and it can attack both front and back side because of how strong this is. So this is our final compound, right? Be careful for SN2 reactions with lithium aluminum hydride. This happens in two separate reactions. So the first reaction will be to get rid of this uh, ketone and then when you subject it under lithium aluminum, aluminum hydride again, it will get rid of this haloalkane. They're not gonna happen in the same step because our limiting reagent is this lithium aluminum hydride, okay? So be careful about your stereochemistry. Again, remember the organic chemistry series is cumulative. You will see this during this time of the quarter, next quarter for 40B you will see carbonyls in the exact same time. And if you actually look at my videos, I actually made a video on carbonyls because that is what you're gonna be covering, okay? Please keep these in mind. 
Remember lithium aluminum hydride. Remember sodium borohydride. Okay. And then now let's see another example of our carbon uh, of our reducing agents. Here we have a carbon nucleophile. Same thing as the hydrogen. This is a carbon nucleophile. It's also a strong nucleophile and a strong base, right? How do we get this? We have these uh, weird alkane with MgBr, right? This is also an alkane with lithium. So let's take a look at this structure for a minute. I'm gonna copy that down over here. See, MgBr, right? I'm looking at this carbon specifically over here. And let's look at this one too. C to Li, okay? Let's go back to chemistry 6A first, and then let's see the um, these two, what they're called. This is called an ionic bond, right? You've seen this with NaCl. You've seen this with um, other ionic bonds that I can't really think of right now. I don't know why, but you've seen this before. So what's the charge of magnesium? Magnesium has a plus two charge, right? If you look at um, the periodic table, it's an alkali metal. It has a plus two charge. Bromine is a halogen. We know that it's a negative charge, negative one, right? In total, this species makes up a plus one charge, right? And to, to neutralize this compound over here, this carbon needs to be a minus one. That's how we get our carbon nucleophile, right? Same thing over here with this carbon to lithium. Lithium has a plus one charge. If you look at it in the periodic table, to neutralize this bond, we need to have a minus one on that carbon, right? And this species is actually very, very important. The guy or the person who made this compound actually received a Nobel uh, prize for this, Grignard reagent. This um, this reagent makes it possible to create additional carbon to carbon bonds. And professors love this Grignard reagent because of the fact that you can make so many synthesis questions based off these two reagents alone. Because think about it, all these other um, reactions that you've been doing, they haven't really made any new or additional carbon to carbon bonds, right? Think about SN2, you're substituting a carbon to bromine bond with let's say a carbon and a uh, OH bond, right? That's not really a carbon to carbon, but now since we have this Grignard reagent, we can create more carbon to carbon bonds, right? So let's see how that works. Or actually, first let's see how they're made, right? Let's first talk about this Grignard reagent or alkyl magnesium. We, so to make this, you don't need to know the mechanism. I'm just gonna tell you straight up. No one's gonna expect you to know this mechanism, right? So we start off with our halo alkane that we want. And then we just attach a magnesium metal. This is what that um, degree symbol is at the top. It's um, saying that the magnesium is in its metal state. And because of this, it's just gonna attack onto that carbon, uh, to that bromine. Nothing special, no, no mechanism you need to know about this. I'm just telling you it now, right? To make this alkyl lithium, you just have the same halo alkane chain with bromine, and you're going to subject it under two of lithiums because we need to have that LIBR. Again, very, very simple. I use this Grignard the most. I don't really care for this lithium. It acts just the same way, but this MGBR is the easiest one for me to remember because it has such a fancy name as Grignard reactions. So let's see how this Grignard reaction works. Again, let's draw this as this MGBR. So now we know which one is our carbon nucleophile. This one is our carbon nucleophile right here because like I said, this MGBR has a positive charge. And because of that, this carbon here will attack this carbonyl compound, right? Because it's a partial positive. And as it does that, this bond leaves and goes up there. And we just created a new carbon to carbon bond, right? So let's see here, let's count our carbons that we have. We have one carbon over here on the right and on the left. 
two carbons here. I mean, yeah, two and then three, right? We have three carbons and then here we have one, two, right? And because that, because of the fact that we did that, we now have five carbons, right? Let's do these first two and then we have the, these first three and then we have one, two, right? Two, three, four, five. Does that make sense? It does. And then now we can subject this under an acidic workup, right? H2O, H plus to make this an alcohol. Oops, that's really messy. I'll draw it over here. Right, now let's check our carbons. Let's see if we did this correctly. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And then we just have that um, uh, alcohol. And now you can see how this is also a reducing agent because we made from a ketone, we made it into, this is now a tertiary carbon because of this Grignard, right? So now that you know all these reactions and solvents and reagents, we can try something called a synthesis problem. This isn't like a baby synthesis one that you've had on your midterm, which I thought was really easy. This actually needs some thinking to do, right? So first, let's see the most, let's break this down, okay? Let's, I'm gonna show you how I think of synthesis problems, okay? I'm looking at the reactants first. I see that there are two carbons with a uh, aldehyde, right? This is an aldehyde, right? And then I'm supposed to make this molecule where suddenly this double bonded oxygen turn into a, uh, an alcohol, right? So I know there has to be some oxidation going on, right? We went from a double bond to now it's a, oh, sorry, not an oxidation. Um, there's going to be a, a reduction going on, right? From a carbonyl to this uh, alcohol, right? Okay, now that I know that, um, I added, I also added, I went from two carbons to now one, two, three, four, five, six. So I tripled my carbons, right? Or I added four more carbons pretty much. So I know I have to be using these Grignard reagents that we just learned about, okay? So first let's do that. Let's, let's add on these, um, uh, the Grignard reagents because we know Grignard reagents reacts with uh, carbonyls, right? And this is a carbonyl, okay? So let's add, um, let's choose to add, it doesn't matter, let's add these two first on the right, okay? So what are the steps? We need to add two, right? So that's one and then two over here. And we have MGBR, right? If we do that, then we have this. So we don't want that. So let's also do an acidic workup. H2O, H plus, and now we have this. Very close to this, right? Very, very close. But we need to do something else. We need to do this thing again to add two more carbon bonds. So how do we turn this? How can we react this so that we can turn it into two more carbon bonds? Well, the way to do that is to make this a carbonyl again. And how do, how do we make this a carbonyl? We oxidize it, right? We're going to oxidize it. And then there's this hydrogen over here, sorry. When we oxidize it, we can use Jones. It's not gonna go there straight yet, right? We can use Jones or we can use um, PCC, whichever you want, could, because this is a secondary carbon, right? Anyone you use will make it into a ketone. So let's use PCC. And then we have, um, we now have, oh, I should probably do something like one, two. So once we use PCC, this hydrogen is now gone, right? So now we only have one, two, three, four, four carbon bonds. One, two, three, four, right? Four carbon bonds, okay? And then now we're super close to this. We have one, two, three, four. We have this first row done over here, right? 
And now we just need these two legs over here or these two legs, whichever one you want to think of. So let's add another Grignard reagent of two, right? And then let's do another acidic workup to give us our um, the product that we want, right? Because if we don't do the acidic workup, we only get this element over here, which has a negative charge, right? And if we do the acidic workup, this oxygen will grab onto that acidic hydrogen and form this alcohol, which is what we did over here. And then now we used Grignard reagents, we use acidic workups, we use oxidizing agents, and Grignard reagents are pretty much reducing agents. So this is a sample of what you might receive. And then now you know what I think of when I do a synthesis. I'm adding more carbon bonds here. I have to use a Grignard. I'm turning this aldehyde into an alcohol. I have to do a reducing agent, right? So I hope that helps. And I hope your studying goes well. This is the end of chapter eight. We have one more to get through and it's going to be further reactions of alcohols. And then you're also gonna be seeing your next functional group, which are called ethers. So they look like this, right? This is my favorite ether, this is called diethyl ether. And you can see now we have um, this sort of looking species over there, right? So that's just a sneak peek for you all. I hope you all have a good day.